things for your sewing room. And then um, I brought a couple things and I'll ask you all if you have any hints or tricks that make your sewing more comfortable. And so the first thing is uh, I did, I have a copy. I didn't want to print it all out because you may not be interested in all these, but every one of these things that is a resource at the bottom, I have, I did print. And so I have a copy if you want to see, uh, you know, if it's, you want to go out and print it or look at the article. But the first thing, and this surprised me because this is like a conference table. They must have had the legs cut off or something. But when you sit, and I am a percher, and you're not supposed to perch on the edge of your chair. You're supposed to sit in your chair all the way with your back to the back, centered in the seat. Your legs should be at a 90 degree angle. Your upper leg should be at a 90 degree angle with the floor and your feet should be able to be flat on the floor without putting pressure on the back of your legs. So an adjustable chair is really important, but most of us have a fixed place where the machine sits. So you can adjust the chair if you get the machine in a proper position. But the machine, you're supposed to be able to be close enough to the machine that your arms should rest at your sides and your elbows should be at a 90 degree angle. Now most of us don't do that. We're all out here. Yeah, now that's the <laughs> basics is to have your machine be so that your arms are not supposed to be out here. You're supposed to be close enough that your arms should be comfortably by your side at 90 degree angle. The other thing I get with the little girls at TAG. I always call them the little girls. But um, they all sit and they turn and do all this stuff. You should line your nose up with the needle. You know, when you have a cabinet that the machine fits in, many times they have you lined up with the middle of the machine and you end up turning. Well, you shouldn't do that. You should be lined up with what you're working on so that you can easily put your hands and see when it, I have to raise my arm because this isn't set down in a cabinet, but you should be able to sit here comfortably and not be stressing your shoulders, twisting your neck. Everything should be lined up with this. And so that's the best thing. Don't slouch. You know, we're hunched over most of the time. We just, most of the time, we are bad for ourselves. The other thing is, I love my new machine. It has three lights in it. But you also need overhead light and maybe even another light to work close. So make sure your sewing room has good light. The other thing is, we sit here and we just sit here and sew till we just can't sew anymore. Well, you need to get up and move. Get up and move about every 20 minutes. It's set a timer or some the new Fitbits or whatever. Every tell hour, you. 250 steps. Yeah. And so uh, if your ironing board isn't right next to you, like many quilters put their ironing board right next to them so they don't have to get up. Well, put your ironing board like over there so you have to get up. Get up and move. Um, the thing about it is you have to move around and the other <coughs> me being the i person i am we sit here and we stare just like we do at a computer screen and we don't blink or anything well about every 20 minutes you need to get up and move but you all breathe you know don't concentrate so much that you forget to breathe the other thing is drink lots of water i found that sometimes i get lightheaded and it's because i'm thirsty <laughs> So when you're getting up every 20 minutes or so, have a drink of water. So anyway, that's the basic setup for your sewing This room. is my very favorite thing for my sewing machine. I've had this thing for 25 or 30 years. It's called a tiltable, or tilt, yeah, tiltable. And you can adjust how much, when you put it under your sewing machine, how much it tips forward. Oh, that's interesting. 
You can also do the same thing with door stops or erasers. And the idea is that instead of having to lean forward, whoops, lean forward to see your work, the machine is tipped. And it's wonderful. It really is a fabulous thing. And I bought this at the quilt show years ago. Are they okay. still available? Or? Yes. Now, Llewellyn has the part. I, own, I It came with two parts. It came with the part that goes under your sewing machine. <laughs> Bring out the one for your feet. Yes, I have the tilt table, which I love as well. And then this is going to differ a little bit from what she said at first. But well, now this is because this of is, the feet needing to be equal. This is kind of tacky. So it's, <laughs> no, I mean, so it sticks. I know, I know. <laughs> so, because one thing I have, my foot, I'm like, at the, yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh, oh, yeah, me too. Oh, you know. oh, wow. So, yeah. the bottom of this thing is a little bit tacky, and these are ribs on here. And then on the bottom of the sewing foot thing, you have a little thing you stick. And so, the ribs on that go into the ribs on this and keep the foot from moving. Oh, that's clever. And then the other thing they had was this gizmo, which is like in your car, if you notice, you have a place to put your left foot. So you put this over here, and you have your right foot on your pedal and your left foot here. And she's balanced. So yeah. you're balanced, so your body's balanced. That's the whole point of that, is so you stay balanced. You're and then you got, the, and I got two little lights like you told me about I could get. And stuck them up under the See, it the puts the machine at an angle. It just brightens everything up. And it just fits right here. Yeah. So my machine came from Bed Bath & Beyond. You can get yeah, them from okay. Amazon. Um, sometimes you can get them at Target. I love this. Yeah. And I every time I don't have it, like when I'm with the girls, mm -hmm. I miss it. Because so door stops would recreate. You can use door stops, the rubber kind, mm -hmm. or the big pink erasers. Because basically what you want to do is put them behind put them on, the back. on the back on the feet of the machine. And it keeps you from having to yeah. lean over. I bought a jeweler's lamp that has that special concentrating. I mean, it's better than a magnifying lamp. And when you're ripping out on black or navy, yeah. with young eyes, it's bad enough. With mature eyes, it's dangerous. <laughs> and you can rip out under that jeweler's lamp and not worry that you're going to okay. tear your face. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it's a uh, it's kind of like Christmas light. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes. LED yes. strips. Yeah, that you yes. put inside the. Has those. Yeah. Has, has anybody tried those? And I've got it. I've had it for probably a year and a half. And I just, I mean, it, it's so hard. It's like you stick it on. And, and I put. Put the risers under the table legs for two purposes. It's nice and high to cut, but I've also put my serger up there, and I surge now standing up. That's um, part of, you know, when you water. sit still, um, everything kind of sits it atrophies, or you start getting a muscle that thinks it's supposed to go this way, and it's not. So moving is important, and. Like I said, drinking water is really important. And there's an added benefit that it makes you get up and move. This is the ergonomic sewing threads article. And it's got really good, good information. Now, the last one that I brought is really a wonderful article. And it's brand new. It's uh, a website that's pretty cool. It's called Sew From Home or Sew For Home. And it's on the, it's the very last one on your resources. They have a lot of fun patterns for home decorating, uh, bags, things like that. But this one is about exercises for sewers. And there are 10 exercises here and they're all illustrated really well to show you how you ought to, you know, like exercise to push your chin down. So we're stretching the muscles that we tend to tighten up. And so, anyway, this one is well, and here's the little stick figure sitting at the sewing machine at the 90 degrees. 
<coughs> but anyway, this is a really cool <coughs> article about stretching and exercising, and at the end there's exercises for your hands. And I've been having beginnings of arthritis in my hands, and when I work on a lot of hand sewing and things, my hands get so sore. And my husband found these things for me, and I just love them. They're compression gloves. And they don't have tips Tommy in the Copper. feet. They're Tommy Copper, okay. and they have little grippers on them. I tend to not remember to put them on when I should do it before, but I put them on after I sew. And I am amazed they keep my hands from aching. Mm -hmm. And I have several little pairs of them, and you can just throw them in the washing machine with cold water. And of course, I have one for each hand. You get them at TommyCopper.com. Okay. Much better my hands feel. And you can me they have you, they come in different sizes, and you measure, I think, this part of your hand across the knuckles, and then you pick the size that's closest to that and um, I just can't believe how much better my hands feel with those little guys and it's called to Tommy, Tommy Copper but you look and see because it's on there yeah. uh, how it Tommy's spelled been too successful with that those are supposed to yeah. keep my hands cool as well mm -hmm. I find that the palms of my hands sweat a lot when I sew and that tends to help keep my hands a little drier too and so I just, those, I mean, I don't own stock in Tommy Copper. There's other ones I'm sure that are equally you get them. You're supposed to really wear them when you sew, but I forget. And so they seem to have the same benefit for me if I wear them after I sew. So you I, wear them at night? I do, especially after I've had a long day of sewing. Mm -hmm. But um, I just think they're wonderful. And it's such a non-invasive thing, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just put on your gloves. So anyway, uh, I don't know if anybody else has any other ideas about what they do to make their sewing room better. I have one of those flaming pillows on my, in my chair. You know? Oh, for your wedge, tailbone? A wedge. Yeah. Hmm. It lets me up. Is it? And it's, you sling it around your shoulders and under, and it's got this these weights okay. on the back. And it keeps your shoulders and back so your neck is not right. You know, well, it helps you keep your posture it properly. Helps. This uh, yeah. article yeah. made yeah. me remember. <laughs> you know, you've seen like cashiers and people in retail <laughs> with the um, mat mm -hmm. under their feet. Mm -hmm. My husband bought me one, and you can order them from catalogs. They're um, they suggest them for the kitchen. But it's an anti-fatigue mat, and I have that in front of my cutting table. And then, like, if I have to do a lot of ironing at one time, I move it and I stand on it when I iron. And it is amazing how much that works. Those gel pillows. You can get them in all kinds of catalogs for uh, ones called, like... Gel Pro mats. Well, they're Gel Pro mats is one of the brands. Mm -hmm. And um, God, I just got the... I think the catalog I got mine out of is called Improvements, and it has all kinds of stuff for home. But you can look. Um, Bed Bath and Beyond has them. Oh really? Yeah, they have the Home Depot problem. will get a cushion mat. No. But those are just a few things you can do to to help yourself feel more comfortable when you're sewing because uh, you know we all want to sew longer. <laughs> we never have enough time to sew. Of course now. So I hope that gave you some ideas and some places to look for um, things to make your sewing space more comfortable. Thank you for doing that. Yes. Yeah.